in here, you know, as we settle That's in. That's what a magic happens, you know? Yeah. Um, hey, what's up, Internet? It's Chris Krug, and I am here at the Dent Conference, Dent the Future, in um, Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm here with my buddy, Matt McKenna. What's up, Matt? Dude? Say what's up to the Internet. How you doing, Internet? Nice to see you. Matt's a board member here at um, Dent, but um, more importantly, it's one of the places we've got to spend a lot of time together over the years. We know each other through the tech world um, specifically, and then through South by Southwest. I think that's where we first met. Actually. It's where I first met you face to face, but we knew of one another and communicated online when I, I bumped, I came to one of your redfish talks at the old Lance Armstrong's yeah. bike shop or yes. whatever back in the day. And I think you were doing um, mobile mark, mobile phone marketing. Yeah, we were like a uh, text messaging platform provider. Yeah. Um, this is not going to surprise you, but the man sitting across from me here is one of the most interesting people that I know. Um, obviously has great personal style and he's got a real brain on his shoulders. He's a real compassionate heart and um, he's just mixed up in all sorts of stuff. And so I'm going to brag mixed about up, you. A good, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm going to brag about you here a little bit, but you know, feel free to take the reins at any point, you know, and stuff. I, I would like to, to dive into each one of these things eventually, but Matt's running a coffee company. Um, in Miami, Florida. When I talked to him last, it was a coffee shop called Imperial Moto. But uh, tell us a little bit about that whole thing. Yeah, I mean, like any like any good entrepreneur, um, you know, endeavor. I just jumped in head first, right? You know, I was in the tech world for a long time, and I sold that company in 2017. And I was really into specialty coffee, and it wasn't really like a cool place in Miami where you could pull up. There was a vibe. There was great coffee. It just didn't really exist, you know. Um, so I didn't really know anything about the coffee industry and just opened up a coffee shop in 2017. And, uh, and now that's blossomed into a full fledged business. And, uh, you know, we have a pretty cool brand side of things, but we're really focused on roasting our own coffee now and selling it to other, uh, restaurants that, that want to offer a superior product. Yeah. Um, and Matt is a connector and an ultimate networker. He sees, you know, patterns and trends. I mean, I, I would even say you're a bit of a trend spotter. Um, well, and, uh, and you put together this agency, you've been doing some repping and then, and, and some uh, promotion of kind of celebrities in the social space or something like yeah. that. Yeah. It, that it, talent Alliance group. And, uh, that sort of happened organically too. Uh, you know, it's friends with a, with a variety of, of people that were, were doing all sorts of different talks and, and endorsement deals and and uh, i decided to make a business out of it um you know lavar burton who's a dear friend of mine uh, reading for- rainbow jordy laforge you know uh, i was fortunate enough to was he kuta kente kuta kente, kuta kente. Uh, fortunate enough to work with him yeah. and find a variety of 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 deals and causes that align with his brand mm-hmm. um and just have fun with it you know and uh we did some, we've done some cool things over the last couple of years um, what's the Ma- Miami scene like these days? Miami is crazy. Yeah. Um, we had a huge influx of people moved to Florida during the pandemic. And now the roads have stayed the same, but the amount of people driving on them has increased tenfold. Yeah. So there's a lot of traffic, very expensive place to live. Um, you know, but we're, we're hanging in there. You know, we just opened yesterday our second location at Aventura Mall. Yeah. Like top five mall of the world i mean he was just showing me some photos on his phone and i mean yeah it's he's being a little bit humble this is a fancy ass coffee shop in a really fancy mall and i mean it looks sweet to open up yesterday and have a look i mean it looks awesome thank you so much yeah you know my wife's an amazing interior designer she owns a company called chelsea design and and she really helped me stay on point when i'm like hey forget the bricks let's just open she's like no we need to keep the bricks you know or whatever touch and you know i'm grateful to have her help on that uh, and our team there is really great too i mean you know i think any successful business you know it comes down to the employees right? you have to have happy employees if your employees are miserable your business is going to fail so um you know part of part of the the secret sauce is just making sure that our employees are really you know love coming to work every day that's awesome man i know it's not an, uh, like retail and stuff isn't like the easiest place to keep uh, staff these days and stuff so yeah we've been really, we've been really lucky you know um most of our people our core team have been there for, for years huh. yeah. cool man um so what brings you to dent what you getting up to here 
Well, I've never missed a dent. Yeah. I'm the only guy other than Steve and Jason who's been to every dent. Um, you know, it's my birthday tomorrow. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. miss it. I'm going to hang out. Uh, unfortunately, I got to leave early on Tuesday and go back. Um, but I'm excited to see everybody. Excited to see you. Oh, uh, you know, Zoe's coming in. We're having dinner tonight. William Coupon. Good to be. I got to share with Matt a little bit today about my own sobriety journey, about me reimagining my whole relationship with alcohol and the kind of year and a half that I spent um, sober. And I, I was happy to share that with you because you've been a real inspiration to me. Maddie um, quit drinking long before I did. And um, your like focus and your dedication to it, man, is is inspirational, you know, like sometimes I could be a little bit passive about it, but I can tell that you're really fucking taking those demons and stomping on their throats and wrestling them into a chokehold and giving them yeah. the fucking gears, man. Like, you know, I started my recovery journey in 2010 and I have like 19 months of sobriety. So um, there's definitely been some moments where I took my will back and said, hey, you know, it's going to be a little bit different this time, but um, Probably the best decision I've ever made is, is to is to continue down this path, right? It's not easy, especially being in a place like this. You know, Dent is very, very whiny. We were talking. Or, yeah, it's very whiny. We um we got a buddy, Greg Kaiser, and he's an yeah. expert sommelier, and he breaks out the fanciest bottles, you know, brings yeah. them on down here and stuff. And that's a big part of what uh, gathers community around and stuff. But um, when you were talking this morning to me about your sobriety, and you were talking a little bit about um how you don't drink and your approach through the meetings and stuff. It was, it was pretty interesting. Cool way of looking at it. Specifically, I like the way you talked about, um, you know, uh, the only way to ensure that you are the man that you are and want to be is to not pick up that first drink. And maybe you could just like elaborate a little bit on like, uh, well, you know, look, I think I really do believe this is a disease, right? I think I, you know, I was a very young, very young man. I think I smoked a joint when I was 12 years old and I I quieted everything down. I grew up in a very noisy home. And I just, you know, I wanted to feel, you know, sort of part of something. And unfortunately, I wanted to always feel part of, like, the wrong crowd, right? I feel like I fit into the misfits. And you know, later in life... And once you start identifying that way... And then yeah, you know, you know, later in life, I was in the music business. And I said, oh, if you're in the music business, you have to drink and drug and all this sort of stuff. And and, and I surrounded myself with people that, that acted like that. And uh, it took a long time for me to realize that that I, I, was, I had a disease, right? I'm allergic to, to alcohol, and uh, you know, of course, I wrapped it in all sorts of things. Like, I would buy the fine wines and, and the and the great whiskeys and all that shit. But let me tell you, it all led to the same place, which was, you know, uh, remorse yeah. and regret. Mm-hmm. And now I don't have any of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, uh, you know, my my kids don't see me drunk, right? My wife doesn't see me drunk, and I'm able to be there for anybody at any time. Yeah. Right. And I know that a part of this too for you as well as for me has been a bit of a self love journey and a love coming to peace with kinda who who I am and, and stuff. And so I know that um when you start shedding some of that bullshit behavior that's brought on by uh giving into the alcoholic tendencies, you actually can be uh, it's easier to love yourself. It's easier to be proud of your decisions oh, yeah. and stuff. You're not being uh, Yeah, I'm not disgusting when I look in the mirror. Yeah. You know, I'm not I'm not waking up. I have to apologize. Uh, but it's a day at a time, you know? I mean, it's... Uh, I noticed... Did you do any, like, therapy alongside of this? Or was yours through meetings and stuff in AA? I'm a big Alcoholics Anonymous, yeah. you know, a believer in that program. You know, which is very simple, right? It's just keep your side of the street clean. Do the next right thing. You know, don't put a drink or a drug in your body. Hey, hey, hey. the church behind us here, we're... Um... We're staying right on the plaza in downtown Santa Fe at the La Fonda Hotel. Um, this morning, there's a, a fiesta festival going on, which is pretty interesting because it seems to be celebrating the like colonial conquistador uh, history of here. Like literally, they had dudes dressed up as conquistadors um, wandering in the streets and stuff. Uh, so I'm intrigued to get a little bit more background on that. But it's been cool to be down here. There's sure. also performances going on and. Maddie wandered down, got a new uh, bracelet, show, show it off to everybody. What was that guy's name? Kevin, Kevin, Kevin White. Yeah, Kevin White. Navajo. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I love coming here. You know, part of coming here is just little things, you know, walking down and visiting with the Navajos and seeing the jewelry. I mean, it's part of the experience here, right? This bell, you know, I'm staying in a room right off, right off the terrace here that's been going on all night. 
I've had like one of the chillest days I've had in the longest time. I led a photo walk at 6.30 this morning with like 10 people. That was so chill. It was just like breaking off from the rest of the group at a quiet time of the day and just wandering around making photos of each other so and cool. together and stuff. And then I went to Charlie Van Kirk. He's an audio engineer. He's building an audio project here and teaching people how to do it. So we went out and recorded soundscapes in the oh. streets. Right when this, you know, uh, processional, conquistador processional is going on. Then I got to go shopping with Maddie and a little bit of a catch up. And then I just caught um, Kyle Kesterson's heart centered AI and masterful prompt engineering workshop. Wow. And it was fucking great, man. There was 30 people in there. His understanding of these things is super deep. But the thing I appreciated most about his workshop. Anytime you're talking to a group of people about this AI stuff, it's very easy for it to get derailed by people's fears about their questions and about all. And, 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 and those things were there, but he was able to keep the whole thing moving forward in a positive direction, man. And it was, um, it was very that's productive. what D Dent brings together the most amazing group of people, like such interesting group of people together for a few days and some of these experiences like you're going to remember this thing with Kyle today for yeah. ever you know these little moments that just stay in your your memory this is definitely not a dent commercial but I know that we were both like legit into this event and so I'm intrigued to hear how you describe it or maybe I'll go first right so like hit it if I met some pedestrian folks at the uh, airport last night and they're like you know what's the thing you're going to and I'm like okay dent dent the future it's called it's like a future focused ideas festival i said i said it's kind of like ted but smaller and like lower production values and i said it's kind of like summer camp for like professional adults a little bit we get together these are people with jobs and careers and businesses and we get together and stay up a little bit late share what we're working on make some art together i don't know it, it, it's an, it's i've been i've been literally coming here before it's inception you know, Steve and Jason, I remember having breakfast with them 12 years ago or something. And they said, we want to build this conference where we bring together like-minded individuals to share our, our stories. And, um, you know, I guess, you know, everyone has heard of TED. So it's a very similar format. There's, there's talks throughout the day, but there's more than talks. There's experiences and dine arounds and activities and photo walks. And I think it's really interesting. Resulting in legit bona fide community, yeah. friendships and yeah, community. It's, it's certainly a bona fide community. And I think every year a variety of new people enter my life and I stay connected with them. Yeah. In some cases, you know, I've met people where I've invested with them and, and been to their homes, they've been to my home. It's, it's a really special, you know, event. I don't like the word networking, but it's certainly like a, a connector. I mean, networking does have like a sort of dirty connotation when used as a verb, but everybody knows that like you are an amalgam of the people you hang around yeah. and spend time with for sure. And that your professional network is really what it's all about. People don't just want to do cool shit. They want to do cool shit with great people that they love, you know, and stuff. And, and I've developed a lot of those friendships here okay. and stuff. So absolutely. Um, Maddie's always got some interesting extracurriculars going on. Uh, you've built some cool vehicles along the way. Uh, you you got me into knife collecting. What do you what do you got? Oh man, I'm so excited to show you this one, bro. You've never seen it before. This is a a Kevin Smock custom handmade for me. And actually, there's a little piece of you in this. You'll maybe see it in a second. The blade shape is one you taught me about. Oh yeah, the old sheep's foot. Unbelievable. So yeah, it's a green anodized steel raindrop Damascus with blue titanium spacers in the back. And uh, I waited fucking five years on that guy's waiting list for that knife, bro. And he went out of business a couple times. Beautiful. The internet revolted against him and said no one's orders would be. And you know what, Kevin Smock, you fucking came through. I would have liked it a couple. Night, yeah. Kevin. <laughs> Let's give it. Yeah. Yeah. So Maddie got me into custom handmade knife collecting. Talk to me a little bit about that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of jumping into industries head first, like, like jumping into this three and a half foot jacuzzi over here. We just jump right in, you know, hit the bottom real fast. Um, you know, when I used to run this, this, this Instagram Punisher life, right. We would, you know, we'd focus a lot on, on knife makers and everyday carry, they carry kind of stuff. And, 
And then uh, my brother started making knives. Mm -hmm. Did you have one of his? I have one of, I have one of his prototypes. You have one of his uh, McKenna um, blades. Yeah. And just meeting with some of these craftsmen, these, these unbelievable custom knife makers is so cool. It's such a cool thing, right? Because a knife is a tool right? or a weapon. It just depends how you wield it, right? Um, and I, I love them. I have a pretty big collection myself. I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't have one of Kevin's knives yet. I don't know, man. You've got some pretty sweet knives. Yeah. This is the only one in my collection that was made for me. Yeah. Where it's I it's so cool when you order a bespoke knife like that yeah. yourself. And knives got you into watches. Now you're on the watch train. I like watches a lot. You know, I like I like nice shit. You know what I mean? What yeah. can I say? You know. What are you collecting right now? What's your What's on the top of your? I know uh, jewelry. Matt's got a little really great jewelry collection. I, I you know I think my my father used to always have a nice watch and a nice chain on. Those things as a kid, you know. My father, I remember when he went out. I was probably about 13 years old or something. He went out and he bought an Omega Constellation, and he came back and it was beautiful, gold and stainless watch. I said, "Oh my God!" I think he paid fifteen hundred dollars for it. I'm like, "Oh my God!" That's so much money. That's not. Yeah. It, felt, yeah. it felt like a lot of money. Yeah. But uh, you know, now I'm sort of, I'm a big watch collector. And I like to be a bigger one, but you know, it's you know, little by little. Man. Some of the nicest things I have in my life are passed down from my grandpa. A couple of nice gold watches and things yeah. like that. And he was just a blue collared guy, but it was something he valued and uh, set aside and saved for us. And I mean, he would be like 105 years old now and he's been passed for 20 years. But I tell his stories all the time and they often come up through me wearing his watches around and stuff, man. It's pretty, you know, I love those stories and I like to, I like to dive into the stories behind the things that I like. You know, I think like you think about, some of the biggest marquee brands like Rolex or Omega or Porsche or whatever, there's an amazing story behind them, right? a pursuit to be the best in their field. And, you know, there's so much history. It's like, you know, when you drive a Porsche or you, or you wear a Rolex, there's so much history that goes into that. I think it's pretty cool. That's cool. That's the brands you identify with. I'm, I'm repping Levi's pretty hard like for the last years. I kind of head to toe we're rocking <laughs> Levi's these days. Tomorrow I'll be uh, sporting the Canadian tuxedo. I think I got four different layers of blue denim. Oh, so, wonderful! Yeah, we'll see that. Um, I got my teeth did in Miami this year. I got. Tell me, tell me about this. Well, I spent the winter down in the Florida Keys and in Miami, and I've long wanted and looked up to guys with gold teeth. Literally, I remember being like eight years old in church, and my family would sit in the deaf section. And there was this deaf guy that had the sickest gold teeth, man. This was before grills and stuff, but I would just look at him and stare at him and like think it was so cool. And um, and uh, and then I was dating this woman and she was really into it. And so she started chirping in my ear about how good I look with gold teeth. She showed me this movie that I liked, uh, um, Spring Breakers, you know, that guy's got a fucking crazy grill. And, uh, and I was down in Miami where y'all have like strip malls full of guys who will give you gold teeth and grills. There's this So what kind of gold do we have? I got 22 carat uh, gold, man. Like, I got the best you can get. They're eight crowns, so they're all individual. I can floss between them. And, uh, wow. yeah, they're permanent. They're, they have to shave your teeth down. They didn't, no. Mine are, like, a little bit, like, bigger than some of the ones where the guys shave their teeth down. But I don't got to fucking shave my teeth down, you know? So Yeah. Um, and now that I've got them, I want to go into one of these shops, maybe with you, and take them all my uh, silver and turquoise jewelry. And see if they'll do like you know three for one upgrades. I'll give them three, <laughs> three silver and uh, turquoise bracelets, and maybe they'll swap cool. me back one gold one to match my teeth or something. You know? Fucking great. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so we're gonna go have a little dinner for you here tonight. Celebrate your birthday. Go off to the reception. Have a hangout. Zoe's coming in with her band. Zoe William. Bell. Coupons coming. Yeah, William Coupon. My Better. friend, my friend in town here, Jimmy Stardust is coming. He used to big hat maker in town here. Cool, dude. Well, is there anything else you want to like share with me or tell me that's like on your mind or your heart? That, you know, uh, there's there's a lot I could share with you. Do it, man. Let's talk. But you know, I, I think back back to the coffee thing. You know, why the coffee was important to me is is I think there's just so much. There's such a massive amount of really bad coffees, right? And as I dove into this industry more, and as I fly to some of these coffee growing regions, and I meet with the farmers, and I walk the fields. And I look in the eyes of the people that are harvesting the fields, the people that are sorting the coffee, and I get to see how much work and love goes into this. That it's fueled my desire to share this with the world. Cool, man. Because there's been so many 
there's so many like really famous high-end restaurants bullshit that spend all this time and money on their food and their kitchen built out their aesthetic and they serve really crap yeah. and yeah. i think educating people on on what the differences are yeah. is kind of cool right where i can be like your coffee you know your coffee's full of chemicals and pesticides ours is organic fair trade you know like there's big differences it's not just like uh Oh man, one of the things I love most about like coffee culture is like the so many right ways of doing things or so many best ways of doing things. You know, you got your yeah, you got your pour overs and your drips and your espressos and stuff. Well, you and, just had like, an espresso out of this machine here, why would? Oh man, it was super smooth. I thought it was funny that we're here at this luxury hotel on the fucking terrace floor at Max Luxury Suite, and he's got this that guy's got his little espresso machine there, and it's like, please descale me, yeah. and he's like, oh, just exit out yeah, of that right, shit. It's like. Dude, this is a I'll luxury hotel, man. That later. Yeah, you need to go descale that shit for us, there, buddy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it was really great, man. It was totally awesome, and uh, I love all sorts of good coffees. I love good campfire coffee. Yeah. I love good truck stop coffee. Absolutely. I love great Italian espressos. Uh, yeah. I, I go to a lot of meetings with a lot of terrible coffee. So I bet I you like do. Yeah, coffee. I bet you do. Well, I wish you like great success with that endeavor, and like I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not gonna be surprised when you you know like okay. you've got a really clear vision of what you're doing and uh i believe in your ability to kind of like spot trends and see patterns move quickly in that direction i know you've got a fucking bombastic network of rad artists and other people that you're getting down with and uh i'm blessed to have so many beautiful friends yeah you're seriously dude them. you have a very rich and creative network man it's very very yeah. awesome man well, I love you very much, brother. Thanks for, um, this is my first uh, podcast that I've done where I'm sitting next to the person. I often, you know, get to do these solo ones in my truck or we do them on Zoom or something like that. So thanks a lot for doing a little bit of the experimental yeah, format. So, and, and we uh, didn't get rained on. It was a little sprinkle. I thought, yeah. I thought we were going to have to. Yeah. I was, I had the faith. I didn't, I didn't think it was going to rain on us. And your hat, your hat just kind of oh, good. captured anyway. It's deeper. I could use a shower. So, you know. <laughs> All right, internet. Over now for now. Thanks a lot for watching this. KK. Mapacanta, signing off from Dent. See ya. Over and out.